You're listening to Shows That Shape Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. This week's guest is Tony nominee and Olivier Award winner Jenna Russell. Russell's professional stage debut came in 1987 as an understudy for Eponine and Fontaine in Les Miserables, a show which she returned to as Fontaine in 1991 and 2000. Her subsequent 30-year theatre career includes West End productions of Follies in 87, Martin Gare in 98, Guys and Dolls opposite Ewan McGregor in 2005, and Sunday in the Park with George in 2006, for which she won the Olivier Award for Best Actress in a Musical. Further notable credits include Into the Woods at the Don Myron Regent's Park Open Air Theatre, Merrily We Roll Along at the Menier and Harold Pinter Theatre, You're in Town at the St James and Apollo, and Grey Gardens at Southwark Playhouse. In 2016, she joined the cast of EastEnders playing Michelle Fowler for two years. She's now starring in Fun Home, which runs at the Young Vic until the 1st of September. Here is Jenna Russell. The most memorable production of my career so far, um, I can't pin it down to one. I would, because of course, theatre has a funny way of you go, well, I wouldn't have done that job if I hadn't done that job. So I would start with um, Guys and Dolls, because I hadn't done theatre for seven years and Michael persuaded me to, Michael Grandage persuaded me to do it. I had the best time of my life. It was such fun and we all adored each other. I also got to meet a lifelong friend in Ewan McGregor, which was just a, a beautiful addition to anyone's life, that man. But from that, I got Sunday in the Park with George, which is kind of the most memorable um, production I've been part of because I, I grew up um, listening to the show, loving the show. I'm a huge Sondheim fan, that's no secret. And, you know, kind of this turned out to be my life's ambition to be in all these shows at some point. But this one is exceptionally beautiful. And to do it with Dan Evans, who was a dream and is one of our finest actors, and I really hope we get to see him acting because he's obviously a brilliant director, but he's a beautiful, beautiful actor and so fantastic to work alongside. It was a pleasure from start to finish. And another one that I have to mention because it was so interesting to do was Mr Burns at the Almeida, which I loved doing. I read the script and I couldn't believe how brilliant it was. Anne Washburn had written this extraordinary sprawling play, which was crazy, but brilliant and you know, it's an ideas play, so full of brilliant ideas. And putting it on and the rehearsal process and the, the calibre of actor I was working with and Rob Icke, who I'm going to probably end up talking a lot about in this podcast, was so brilliant and it was extraordinary. And then to put our little baby in front of an audience that really didn't know what they felt about it and um, then watching Rob tweak and change in in previews and then reviews coming out which loved it and hated it and people shouting at us and what watching the the demographic of the Almeida audience change during that run it was an extraordinary experience and something I look back on and really felt like a pioneering moment in theatre of putting on something so that made people have such a strong reaction. It was gorgeous. As a theatre goer, the most memorable production I've seen, it's a tricky one because there's been lots of things I've loved and lots of things I've not loved, but they've had an effect. Um, but one that always sticks in my mind is um, because it was a long time ago that I saw it, Oliana, which was directed by Harold Pinter with um, Leah Williams. And it was one of those moments, it was, when I saw it, it was still, the theatre was still, it was a, it was a kind of, a play that a lot of the upper middle classes were going to see. And it's a Mamet play. I love Mamet. I love him and it's a it's a strange play but it was so brilliantly directed by Pinto it was so sparse and nobody 
made comment on their character. So the surprises in the play came thick and fast. But I remember sitting there and there were genuinely ladies of a certain age in twin set and pearls with their hair coiffed, looking a bit like Margaret Thatcher, because it was the play that they should be seeing in the days that people dressed to go to the theatre. Um, and moments, I remember a moment happening in the play where Leah Williams' character says to the, the, the male character, what you, what you said to, what you did to me, I'm paraphrasing, what you did to me was tantamount to rape. And this woman, you know, seven stone in her twin set and pearls, stood up and shouted, you see the, the swear word of four letters that begins with C, screamed it. And she had no, she had no control over that moment. She was so angry. And that was, oh, it was electrifying. It was brilliant. And going outside the theatre after the show, Honestly, I've never seen it. They used to, I don't know whether they still do this anymore, they used to put reviews outside the theatres, the full reviews, and people were almost pushing each other out of the way to read the review, the review to, to understand what they, how they felt about it, because they couldn't work it out. They couldn't work out how they felt about it. They knew they, knew they felt a lot, because it it's one of those plays that does elicit that kind of response, but they had no idea what it was they felt. Another one that did that to me was Edmund, which was at the Royal Court, again by Mamet. Um, and I can't remember who directed it, but I know the American, an American actor came over to play Edmund and it was just sublime. Again, just one man. I saw it subsequently at the National, which was good, but the, the, the one I saw at the court years and years before was astonishing. It was beautiful. And a final one, because I can't not, is Oresteia that, that Rob Ike um, adapted and and directed, and I couldn't go to the press night. I was invited to the press night. I couldn't go. I went on a matinee by myself, which I encourage everyone to go and do. Go to the theatre by yourself. It's the most beautiful thing because no one talks to you. No one changes your opinion with their opinion, or you don't can't you can't. At the interval, you're still in the world of the play. And I, you know, I know Rob and I, and I admire him, but I had no idea until I saw the Oresteia quite what a genius he is. The writing, beautiful, his, how he, how he makes things happen on stage in real time. It's stunning. And the performances, the design, it was vibrant and edgy and ugly and beautiful and I, I just couldn't get enough of it. It could have gone on for four days and when I came out afterwards and Rob had come to meet me, he was like, did you like it? I said, oh, honestly, I said, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I, people have said that to me in the past about shows, luckily, that I've been in again. I, I can't kind of talk to you about it yet because I need to sit with it for a bit. And that one I really had to sit with because I was I was so overwhelmed with the beauty of it and the the strengths in it and how theatre can be that demand. He you know he 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 makes theatre for people with brains. You have to think. It's none of it's given to you on a plate. It love it or hate it. It's muscular and visceral and. Bloody marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> the show that I wish I'd seen and missed, actually there's two of them, now I come to think of it, but firstly, Jerusalem. Really wish I'd seen Jerusalem. It's kind of folklore now, isn't it? You, everyone goes, oh yeah, but Mark Rylance in Jerusalem, always doing a Mark Rylance, in, attempting a Mark Rylance, whatever. Or, you know, you work with the director and they go, yeah, but it's that kind of, you know, that bit that happens in Jerusalem. Oh, I haven't seen it. And I remember I had an audition. I think someone left it, and my agent said, "You have to, you you have to go for it because it's Jerusalem. It's amazing." And I don't know why. Maybe I got another job. I didn't go for the audition. I don't know why. I don't know why. There must have been a good reason. But I wish I'd seen Jerusalem. It sounded amazing. He sounded like he was off the scale, as only he can be. So that, and the other one, I think, is Yerma. I wish I'd seen Yerma. 
again, you know, I look at the pictures of Billy Piper and Yerma and I go, oh, that looks right up my street. That looks absolutely like something I would have loved. So I wish I'd seen Yerma. Maybe they'll film it or something. Okay, a person I would most like to work with. Um, again, there's a couple. That's so rubbish, isn't it? I should hone it down to one. Um, I've always wanted to work with Adam Gettle. I'd love to work with Adam Gettle. I, I think he's a beautiful, beautiful writer. When I was in New York with Sunday in the Park with George, I was really hoping I'd get to meet him. And um, just because I love him, I think he's brilliant. And I remember Jessica Malaski, one of our castmates, who's good friends with him, she went, oh, no, no, he's, uh, he's on his farm. He's on his farm. I said, he's got a farm. She said, yeah, he kind of disappears to his farm. She said, he's great. He's just doing farming. So <laughs> when I got the chance to meet Adam Gettle, he was farming. Um, so I'd love to work with him because I do think he's, his music is glorious, beautiful, everything he's ever written. And I, not only that, I mean, my God, what a beautiful voice he has. It's interesting working on this job um, with the, the American and creative, some of them know Adam and talking about the way he writes because he doesn't play piano and he doesn't, he can't write music, he he plays guitar, um, but it's all self-taught and you can really hear that in his music and you hear that when he sings that it's kind of, there's just something different going on against the normal form and I, I love that, I love him, I think he's great. And another person I would like to work with, again, is Robert Icke. I really would. I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to continue to work with him again. I'd love him to, if he would, could you please, Rob, start like a, a repertory theatre company of actors where maybe there's 30 of us and we do two years worth of work. This is just my plan. Where we don't get paid tons, but we get paid enough to pay our bills. And we're not in all the plays, we're in, you know, you play big parts in some and small parts in others and have a real company. I'd love to do that with someone like Rob because he's, uh, he's, he's a genius, proper genius. Thank you for listening to Shows That Shaped Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. If you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode.